All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our uh, chaos community call for this week. It's great to have you here. Um, if somebody could share the minutes in the chat for new arrivals, that would be great. This is the common working group meeting I'm instead of say. community meeting. Just to oh, whatever. I, 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 I'm like, recording. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you just lead? I'm done. <laughs> All right, so I'll get to the first agenda item. Thank you. We have a, quite a few things today. Um, so the reminder to fill out the survey, Don, I think you've been kind of posting this in a variety of places. Um, have you seen the response rate at all? Like how many you've gotten so far? Yeah, last I looked, it was it was 19. 19. Okay. It's yeah. getting better. Because actually, it's not it's not bad. And a lot of people are leaving comments. So we, we've got some really, really good ones. Okay. One of my favorite ones on the positive side was that it feels like a family. Oh, so that's, nice. that's going to be highlighted somewhere when I actually. That is very it. nice. You know, we, we've actually heard these kind of like similar comments to that as well. But it's a <laughs> really it's nice to hear. Thing. Just warm. Fuzzy. It is. It is. I agree. That's nice to hear. So, OK, um, do you you're going to leave it open through. OSSEU, is that right? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give people a QR code and a um, draft slide if people want to include it in their presentations and see if we can okay. talk a little more and then we'll close it after Bob. And then are you just going to go through the data yourself? Um, uh, no, uh, I am going to go through the data myself. I am going to remove any personally identifiable information and company okay. names and things like that from the comments. Yeah. And then I'll post the data set probably in the... Uh, the data science working group repository. I'll okay. create a place for surveys for it so that other people can do some analysis of it as well. Interesting. I'll do my own analysis, but I'll be curious to see what other other people come up with. So I think okay. we'll sort of crowdsource the analysis. I've never done that before. Like we'll crowdsource. See, we'll see how it works. Yeah. I haven't really done it either, but I thought okay. different people might have different insights. And so it'd, okay. be, it'd be interesting nonetheless. Yeah, it will be interesting. Okay, well, that's great. Um, and it'd be nice too, because then you could actually just spend some time in that meeting, in the data science meeting, to just kind of put them in front of people yeah. and talk out loud. Okay, cool. All right, great. Um, let's see, we have self merge rate with a question mark with respect to a metric being released. Has it been released? If it's been published, then yes, I'm guessing it's been released. Yes. Okay. Uh, this was the one that, so this is the one that Ray had brought forward. You remember? And it had kind of, I don't know, I think it maybe got bigger for a little while. And then we had to kind of pare it down a little bit. Um, and for those of you that weren't following right there at the very end, <laughs> Elizabeth was trying to Get a few things done and was contemplating self-merging her own <laughs> her, her own work on this metric which, which I, did I, not I, <laughs> I encouraged her to do it just for the irony <laughs> i thought about this metric when i self-merged a couple of pull requests today <laughs> yeah. in one of the chaos I'm think about it. yes i'm going to think about it every single time i do it now yeah. I needed to get it out. I had lots of feedback, but I needed to get it out so I could use that issue template. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're all good there. Um, thanks to, to Ray. I don't think Ray's on the call right now, but thanks to Ray for kind of bringing this forward. And thanks to everybody for giving feedback and Elizabeth kind of getting it through there at the end. I feel like we've actually published a few metrics and metrics models recently. Um, so that's been kind of nice uh, to get those out. Um, all right, the next thing on the list was second time contributors. I'm guessing this is... Yeah, I started the metric oh, oh, Sean, document. Yeah, great. Um, this is a, a metric... I'm trying to get, move this. This is a metric that has been, I think, kind of discussed many, many times. And it's one I think that Sean had brought forward as a good indicator. Yeah, it's um, been... It's one that's um, come up. A lot, so I think so too. Um, do you want to do you want to get a little feedback on it, or do you want to try to capture a few things? Yeah, I thought. I mean, I I just got to start on it with the basic setup, and I thought we could. I thought we could spend a little bit of time talking through it if uh, people want to do that. Okay. Um, you can uh, bring it up to share it. I think I am. And, uh, see, it might not. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think you are actually, yep, I see it. Okay. So 
So maybe um, could you talk a little bit about maybe what what this is to you and why why people care about it? Um, yeah. Um, so people have expressed interest in it because the drive by contributions where people don't ever come back, um, they're a phenomena in open source. And so we call them second time contributions, the different projects threshold them differently. So it might be the third contribution or the fourth contribution where you see people are either continuing to contribute and it's usually, you know, we know from research based on their experience, trying to contribute the first couple of times in a project and whether they're responded to or their pull requests or ideas are welcomed and accepted. So I think it's a good trailing metric for are you effectively welcoming newcomers? You know, if you can see improvements in second time contributions or fourth time, whatever you call them, but let's call them second time to keep it easy, then I think I think you know if you see changes over time, I think you can know that you're, some of the things that you're doing for new contributors are, are more effective okay. than, than in others. And so that's, that's the value of it. Is there anything else out other than kind of a, that trailing metric? For I mean, it's, it's, um, it's certainly a measure of, uh, I, You know, if you if you added the time long if you added some longitudinality to it, you could talk about people making contributions, you know, second contributions over time. Um, you could look at n contributions. So we, you could look at we could call it continuing contributions, but um, I think second contributions. Um, I don't know. It's pretty clear what that is. Yeah. Okay. And and I don't know that it does anything except give you a trailing indicator for newcomers and how you're retaining them. Okay. But a lot of people seem to care about that. Yeah, they, I, I agree. I was just trying to... Don, is this something that you had ever taken a look at in the work that you had done? Um, not really, but I do think it's really important. Um, it is... It is, you know, I guess there are different ways of looking at this. You can look at it as kind of, you know, the the core contributors, casual contributors, regular contributors. Um, but I do think I do think it's really good to look at the people who come back versus mm -hmm. the people who just submit once and then and then never never come back. Mm -hmm. So if there was a kind of a downward trend on this over time, where like where might you look I, I mean personally I might look at like risk time to first response on some of the PRs is was one of my first thoughts um and it was actually based on a discussion that kind of you had put together earlier Don just places to look like if those go down then yeah that time it's a really bad thing yeah, yeah I was like a, oh go ahead John I agree time to first response on issues and pull requests is an important metric whether or not your first pull request is accepted is a really strong indicator mm -hmm. of whether or not you'll come back. Yeah. Okay. And then I would also look at um, other, other potential issues within the community. So, so this can also, um, you also don't see people coming back a second time if there's a particular types of toxic um, behaviors going on in your mm -hmm. community. So maybe the pull requests, the responses are um, not particularly kind, for example. That would also, um, and that's more of a, you can't really have, it's hard to get a metric that 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 does that. That's more of a thing that you have to interpret um, as part of the community, but, but that can sometimes drive people away from continuing okay. to contribute. And if that's the case, you also tend to see declines in regular contributors and other, other types of casual contributors okay. as well. Okay, great. In the chat, oh, minutes. Okay. Um, so let's see, objectives. Leadership, can you talk to that a little bit, Sean? Why? 
like um, the part I have highlighted. And then Ruth, I do see your hand, so I'll, I gotcha. I think uh, I think you know that. I think projects that respond well don't have one committer in general. So I think if you have a, a core of people who are attending to the project who are attending to the issues and pull requests, that indicates that leadership is distributed. Distributed. And leadership, like being maintainership here, or. I mean, it could be. It could be maintainership, but it could okay. be that there's a core of people who are very responsive to new pull requests or okay. commenting on issues. Right. So it can take a lot of forms outside maintainership. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts on that before I ask Ruth? All right, uh, Ruth, you have a comment? Yeah, just going back to the other, the previous section where we kind of give some reasons, I was thinking, like, where does this fit in? Like, for contributors, um, I know there are sometimes where people come into a project just to fix an issue that might be this, like, fix a bug or something and just fix it and go their way. So where does that also fit in in this? Um, how does, it, where does it also fit in? It's like with people who don't really intend to stick around. Yeah, yeah I mean, I then there's, you know, it's, um, one is, you know, one assumes, uh, some constant number of that around a project. So I think the second time contributions, when you do things to welcome newcomers, like work at being more responsive or whatever, um, those things will show up or not show up as effective with the second time contributions. You'll always have people who they would just want to give something to the upstream so that it works for them. Um, yeah, that's that's a certainty. So I just wrote um, maybe at least in this description. There is it does feel then maybe that there is an assumption that we're trying to build community. This metric is intended to to help reveal some of that because there could be a scenario where somebody comes in to Ruth's point and just makes a bug fix. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Then they're just gone. So, okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, community managers can use second time contributions count to. understand Oops. the newcomer experience. Yep. Organizational members can use it to um, better understand, I would guess, to um, is this, um, would a contribution have to be like a merged pull request? In Augur, we count it uh, anything as a contribution. So even if I just start a pull request? Yeah. Then the CNCF, we look at um, lots of different things that count as contributions. So like even comments on issues in PRs count as contributions, okay. for example. So it would be more like if our employees are engaging in the project. The reason I asked is because like, if it had to do, if it was just comments, like what you're talking about, then an organization could understand how employees are engaging in a project. If it was merged pull requests, it might be a little bit more along the lines of um, like understanding if our, our employees can actually get things into the project, which would be kind of a different view. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, second time contributions are not a, a big concern for projects that don't want outside contribution. I mean, those exist. Okay. 
Would, do you think the second one, organizational members, do you think a company would ever look at if their employees are making a second contribution to a project? And if they were, why would they care? Yeah, I don't think companies care about it. I think projects care about it. Okay, so, so to the, so like if I'm paying a developer, I'm probably paying them to make more than one contribution, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm a community manager and I'm trying to develop a group of contributors around a project, then I, I care about that more. Or if I work in a company and I'm a community manager for one of their products and we welcome outside contributions. Okay. You know, I care about that. I care about that more. If, if I'm like running Twitter bootstrap, um, I care about that less. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the the stance of this metric is really kind of from within that within the community. I think so. Yeah, and for and it's it matters to projects that are actually open. Okay. Um, okay, that's fair. Okay, great. Uh, do you want to talk? We'll move on here. And maybe. Yeah, and because I just had one question about the section below. Um, does do, do the implementation things go after the data warning or is there a heading missing on the template that I used? Because um, it says implementation and then it's the data disclaimer. And yeah, this has been moved. Okay. Not here anymore, just because it was really clunky. Yeah, so wherever that goes. Um, it's down at the bottom of this. Okay, yeah, this I wasn't. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go hack out the implementation filters and okay. I added one visualization so far. Okay. And does this help a little bit too? Oh yeah. No, I mean, I think talking through it's very helpful. So that is good. Okay. Well, thanks for starting that. I appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. Next on the agenda is the common working group scope. This should just take a minute or two. <laughs> So um, I didn't put that there, so I don't. I wonder if it was Kevin. Maybe we should defer that one until he gets here. Probably Kevin. OK. Um, Elizabeth, maybe we could move on to the project manager meeting update. Sure. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that we did have our first meeting of the project managers this week. Um, bring it up here because it will probably touch on common um, somewhat. Uh, we decided that we're going to use uh, GitHub projects to manage things that are happening in chaos that will help keep it more transparent and kind of uh, directly tie in what's going on in the project to the repo. And that way there's not, because we had also talked about Trello and um, Notion, but we decided not to shove everybody to another platform. So we're just going to try to use GitHub projects for um, managing some of the, the things going on. Um, next meeting is September 20th, so there is a little bit of a break. Um, one of our project managers, um, Catherine, is going to do kind of a walkthrough on how GitHub projects works, because a lot of us weren't that familiar with it, um, or maybe just had like a high level knowledge of it so she's gonna walk do a walkthrough kind of tutorial with us on that um and we also decided that we were gonna have um we're, we're kind of lumping in project managers uh, under the maintainer role that has already been defined by the governance doc so we didn't have to change that or mess with that at all so the project managers were, were hoping for two per project just so there's a backup um, and they will be listed as maintainers on the repo where the project is happening and where the project board is also going to live. Um, and then we also decided it would be great to have like a technical lead and or a knowledge lead for each project that um, is more responsible for the actual implementation and the work that gets done. And then the project managers or maintainers will um, just collaboratively work with that person to make sure that things are flowing if they need you know help or advice or whatever, um, you know, whatever they need just to keep things moving um, but the project because we were very concerned about project managers being overloaded or overburdened and mm -hmm. so that's why we decided to not only have two of them per project but also have make sure that each project does have like a technical lead um, so that and also so that the technical person um, doesn't get overloaded with managing the whole project as well 
So the project manager will help um, figure out like what tasks need to be done, maybe help them open issues if needed, point newcomers to different issues that are open in the repos um, for help, um, things like that, just to help kind of coordinate and make sure that you know there is some forward movement. Um, we are also going to make a list of all of the projects because there's a lot like I don't even know. Yeah, I know. Right. I don't even know if I know what all the projects are. So Busayo and I are going to make a spreadsheet of just here's a list of all the stuff and maybe links to the GitHub repos for all of them. Um, as far as going forward, um, we would like for if somebody has an idea for a project to make sure that um, we do have project managers that are able to assist and keep that project going so we are gonna next time we didn't have time to talk about this but next time on september 20th hopefully we'll have time to talk about what a process would be so if someone has an idea for a project or they want to do something um, that we have like a, a set process and it's very organized and clear of how we can kind of get it on the books so to speak and and integrate it into all of chaos and make sure that it has you know, kind of the attention and the resources, if, if we have them, <laughs> that, that we, we uh, make sure that they're, you know, supported in that idea. So yeah, that was pretty much it. That was a great meeting. And we did record it, it'll go on YouTube tomorrow with the rest. So so uh, in, in this case, like a, a project is something like the badging bot. Correct. That Correct. would be like a, a project or the newcomer slack bot, or okay. the badging website. Or, or the, the knowledge, knowledge base, the knowledge base thing. Or the knowledge base. Yeah. Like those are all like kind of sub projects that are going on in chaos and some okay. are temporary and some are ongoing. I got it. And the context working groups are not projects. No, no. Mm -mm. And I'm just, yeah. Um, and obviously like the working groups themselves are not projects. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, it what would about be something, what about sorry. something like badging, like project badging? So that's a little bit different um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because it is kind of partnered with All In and it's yeah. pretty specific. I I personally don't would not lump that in as a okay. project because it's our it's kind of on the side. You know, it's already yep. got resources Partner, allocated. Yep. It's, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, but the the event badging website I would count because that's just all chaos. And the whole like event badging thing, the GitHub flow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That, so Enux badging bot, event badging bot, the event badging website. Those are separate projects. And like right now, Kingsley kind of is the only one having to manage all of that. You know, all of the whole event badging website. Okay. So it would be great to have some support from for him. So he's not overloaded with trying to do the work, but also point people to different things that need to be done, open issues, check yep. in, we'll answer questions. Like it's a lot. So hopefully a project manager can kind of offload some of that work. Okay. Um, how does something like event badging, um, like what's the scope of it as a project for a project manager? So like event badging, obviously has like the flow that occurs on GitHub, you know, like the issuing the, the result and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then it also includes like the recruitment of new badgers as an example. So like, is that in scope, something like that in scope or out of scope or? I would say that's a separate issue. Okay. Um, because the badging bot is kind of like its thing and that flow mm -hmm. is it's, it's contained in that. Yep. Um, recruiting new badgers, like I kind of just do that as part of yep. community. So okay. I would not include that as part of okay. that project, but that would be maybe something in the in the whole process of, you know, defining the scope. What is the yeah. project? So that would be a step in the okay. it, when someone comes up with a new idea, for instance, okay. um, like Anita had an idea for a landscape project of, you know, here's everything. Yeah. So that in itself is a project. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like we, at the beginning, we would need to define the scope of, OK, what are we trying to do here? What who's involved? Who's going to be the leads and okay. all that? OK, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank, and thanks for answering all my questions. I had a oh, bunch yeah. of community. I'm just trying to get my like kind of what the focus is. But yeah. this is helping a lot. So thank you. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that it will help um, not only just keep things moving and keep keep the, the sub projects sustainable, but also have a little bit easier time for newcomers to find
find where things are because sometimes projects the people working on the projects are so involved in the project itself it's hard mm -hmm. to step back and like create all the issues for all the things that can be done and so you know people we have a lot of people willing to help but you need that kind of mediator that can take the work and then split it out if that makes sense it does and, and i'm starting to understand these as like they're kind of the projects that we have that are at times at least the ones you've been talking about mostly are kind of technical projects that kind of need to keep running mm -hmm. 24 7. yeah and yeah and we're also hoping too that it's not um just like one person that knows right that right exactly project. so like you yeah. know if you know if Ina gets sick like and something goes wrong with the badging bot right now we're we're it's not great so um yeah so it's, it's meant to do kind of solve a lot of our issues with regards to sustainability and that solve a kind of that bus factor that we have on a few yeah. I, I mean yeah and also if we're diligent about using the the project boards for the status anybody at any time can go and look at what the status is for any of these projects, which okay. would be really beneficial. That's yeah. great. Um, project managers tend to be really good at keeping those sorts of things up to date. That's great. How does, Don, I always seem to kind of ask you in your perspective, like with Kubernetes, but just I, the like large number of bots that they have to help manage workflow, is it s similar? Do they have like teams assigned to kind of manage and just yeah, like within, within, Kubernetes, within Kubernetes, there's um, an infrastructure. Uh, everything in Kubernetes is like a special interest group. And so there's a, there's a uh, infrastructure, special interest group that maintains okay. all of the infrastructure um, that's plugged into GitHub and okay. Slack and, and other places. So there's a, there's a whole team that's kind of responsible for that within, within Kubernetes. Okay. Do they, I, it's a rhetorical question. Maybe where do they have this <laughs> published? Like, could you have that handy? Because it might be useful for the project manager group here to just take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, uh, I'll see if I'll see if I can find it. Okay, as a just a point of reference. Okay, um, all right. This is great. Thank you, Elizabeth. I I'm this is making good sense to make sure that our small pieces don't. <laughs> fall apart. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, I just sorry, there was one more uh, quick thing I wanted to say too. Um, we're hoping um, that also by keeping things on GitHub and opening issues, even for non code contributions that we're going to be able to track and surface those contributions a little better. Mm -hmm. That still seems to be something we struggle with. Well, I know I personally struggle with how do we identify, how do we, you know, surface and, and recognize and highlight those non-code contributions. Okay. So, you know, even if it's design or writing, like whatever it is, we're hoping to just put it in GitHub and that way it'll show up. Right. And then they're like green square, they get that kind of credit for co contributing too. Perfect. Okay. This is great. Um, thank you. Any... And I did just look at the Kubernetes um, yeah. infra uh, special interest group. And they they manage a lot of it as sub projects, so they have sub projects for for various things. I don't okay. see the bots listed as a separate sub project, so it's possible that's somewhere else. But I, I suspect that it's I suspect it's somewhere in the SIG. Okay, but I'll drop a link to this in the notes. Thank you, um, Kevin. We we went we hi Kevin. How was class? Good, good. Uh, we we deconstructed. Uh, uh, Space Jam 1996 website. It was a uh, that seems very interesting. yeah. Go go take a peek. The, uh, the the website from 1996 for Space Jam has been up and running uh, almost continuously since 1996. You are uh, probably derailing this meeting. Just it's, so uh, it's 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 <laughs> and uh, everybody gets it, is a, <laughs> it is a it is a time capsule. Uh, so apparently in 2010, someone realized that it was still up and running. And so they uh, so decided they, to keep it going. They they initially uh reacted by shutting it down, but there was uh there was kind of some backlash. So they uh they put it back up. Well, so please, it's, please share the link in the chat. So everybody can click on it. <laughs> <laughs> um we we did we skipped this one discuss common working group scope i'm guessing that was you did you want to so it's kind of it's it's actually very much related to what you all were just talking about when i came in so with the with that project management group coming together 
uh, I do, I, I kind of want to make sure that we understand what the uh, the common working group scope is. So the, the question I would have for all of you is, uh, do we need to adjust it? For example, we have, we've been kind of, we, we do have, we did have just now an update from the, uh, the project management group. Uh, we often have updates from the, uh, the knowledge base group that's, that's working on restructuring that. Uh, are those things in scope for this meeting? Uh, or would it be the, the knowledge base restructuring update? Maybe in the future that moves to the project management group. Uh, and if that's the case, does the, would the project management group update here or would we prefer they update to the community group in whole? Just kind of a, a general general question about what the scope is moving forward now that we, we do have the, these other uh, kind of mechanisms for uh, managing uh, the chaos in general. So, and then also related to, I know we, with the uh, with the context group liaisons, we've really started to focus on common metrics across chaos uh, with the context groups. Uh, do we also want to include the metrics model working group in there? Do we want to concern ourselves as common do we do we want to take a look at what the the, the model working groups are doing as well, uh, or is that out of scope? So two so, questions, I suppose. Yeah, these are good questions um, because in part we have fifty minutes twice a week in this meeting, <laughs> which is not a whole lot of time. Um, I mean, so I think maybe your first question was like, where where do these some of these discussions get surfaced and how do we share them more broadly than just, for example, within um, the working group or the, the project manager meeting? Um, that's a good question. Do people have thoughts on, on kind of how we structure that? And that link is in, by the way. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, yeah. everybody. <laughs> I have a hard time getting a head around. I have a hard time getting my head around it completely because I didn't get to the first project manager meeting yesterday. Um. Yeah, this is like um. So at least my 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 thought is, I would. Well, how about this? What if we we had like a lot of those updates from say the project manager meeting or the knowledge base restructuring happen in the community call. Just that seems to be the most widely attended call and we could ask for those updates there. That makes the most sense to me. What do you what do you think about that? I see nods, but that is kind of what I was thinking when I when I had brought it up. So maybe okay. maybe we we add so right now we have a we in our meeting we have a context group liaison updates section where we jump yep. through the the different maybe yep. maybe in the community we add a tab that is projects project management updates yep and then and then we update through each of those individual projects and the and this uh, one too the knowledge yeah base. yeah the knowledge base would be one of those project management oh I see, up, I see updates right so, kinda... so like so, maybe if if this is gonna be ongoing for any period of time, maybe we try to add a project manager to it to help. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, help Zanad okay. and that team out, and so because it's a project, right? So it's so, so it would uh, kind of fall under that purview. Okay, so this let's see. Let me let me get you. So this, 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 and then like include. like that yeah and, and and badging bot would be another one that could be updated in community right. and and so and so on so so basic but but it would be reported to the community meeting and not the common so, yes. so we'd actually be we'd be removing that component from common i agree with that uh which would leave common to then focus on metrics and models and and and, and, and models is that that other question so. okay so, and I, I would, I would like to include models in the scope of common as well. 
mm -hmm. uh, and and maybe treat the uh, metrics model working group basically as as almost a context group, uh, kind of for for our purposes anyway. I know they're not a, they're not a context group, but uh, that's that's what I would like to do. But uh, at the same time, I would defer to uh, uh, the group. Okay. If they have if they have different thoughts. I think what we found is that the metrics models, um, when you start to put them together, are almost always missing a metric. So I think they they always end up coming in here anyways. Uh, so I think doing a little more of the development of the metrics models in here wouldn't be wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay. Or or they have too many metrics. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. they're actually mega models. Okay, uh, I agree that being able to work on metrics models here makes a lot of sense to me um, and kind of like the metrics. I mean, they can, I'm starting to think that the metrics are metrics models. They can kind of originate from anywhere. It's just, it's almost like common kind of serves as a, a uh, another observer on the metric or the metric model. Yeah. Lot. And so That's it just bounces back between the two. I think we can, we can kind of be a point of rigor and validity yeah. for the, for the metrics and the models as they're coming through when it becomes that uh agreed that check process yep um and like even in particular like uh in the community call on uh earlier this week like the question marks you have there with app ecosystem like they have it might be 30 metrics that need to be developed and um I think this would the intention was that this is the place to do that and to to get those off the ground and get those moving forward. And if and you're right, if we spend a lot of our time getting updates on other things, then we just lose our time to focus on developing metrics and metrics models. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on just kind of that structure from folks? Thanks for the input. All right. Um, so then we would still do the context working group updates here. Um, we can work backwards. So app ecosystem, I do think we need to find a liaison for this. I think we are including it as, um, we are, I think, starting to include it as, as a context working group. And there are a lot of metrics, like I had said, that are going to need to be developed. So we can put this on the list um, of to-dos, you know. Yeah. Spelled it right. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess with respect to the other context groups, are there any updates that people have with respect to university, scientific software, or corporate OSPO? Just in terms of what you're hearing from the discussions. I mean, I think there are some metrics models coming out of scientific and academic. Um, scientific is, I think, more focused, but they were kind of light this week. So I expect that to pick up after the. OK. Um, I guess also maybe just a note in scientific. Uh, you know, we had talked to Melissa. One of the things that we're doing in the scientific software space is to, um, what do we call it? Like provide a, a model as a, like a starting point. I, I can't, what was, <laughs> there was a better word than that. Again, my brain's not working real well right now, but um, just as, it's kind of a way to, to have a conversation around what metrics and metrics models can do for scientific software communities. So I think for a while we had kind of been spending time on that framework, thinking about what the functions and the goals and the questions, the metrics were when that might've been a, a conversation that was a bit too early. And in fact, we just needed a metric model or some metrics to just kind of show what a conversation could look like <laughs> and, and how they might think about that conversation. So that's, I think, something that happened in scientific software. So thanks to Melissa and Don for for that. Um, uh, Ruth, you have your hand up. So I was just going to ask one question, like in relation to like the corporate OSPO for the 
will will the common working group create or be in charge of creating like the best practice guide would they like for creating metrics or metrics models no no for the chaos best practice guide that was discussed in oh. the possible will this working group be in... uh, oh the book chapter so the yeah. not the chapter there was a conversation around um the best practice creating like a guide i think that would probably just stay located within the corporate hospital working group okay or or it might be might end up as a project okay so we are just focused on metrics yes and metrics metrics. And metrics. yeah and so like the, these updates at this point i don't from attending a lot of these i don't think we're bringing a lot of new metrics and metrics models at this point i feel like we've been spending yeah. a lot of time just thinking about what that framework could be and ultimately getting to metrics so it kind of appears that at least in a couple of these different context groups we're not going to get to metrics that need to be developed for probably a, maybe a month or two as as we kind of settle on a framework is that what everybody else is kind of feeling in the context groups and we're still a little ways away from a lot of them developing metrics or metrics models Oh, I mean, we are, we are working on that uh, the second time contributors metric. Yeah, currently, which came from uh, that came from the university science, science or scientific yeah. software. Okay. I missed university this week because I was at a conference, but yeah, it seems like it's still kind of background work in that group. Yep. And I hope your vacation is going well. It is. <laughs> Wherever you might be. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, my my big takeaway, I think, from from university, at least for common working group, is there's they're really different <laughs> than scientific software and uh, corporate OSPO. I can't speak too much to App Ecosystem at the moment, but the questions they're asking are just really different to me than what are being asked in scientific software and, and corporate OSPO. That's that's my take. And I'm not sure how that's going to necessarily translate into metrics. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about what you mean. Um, I feel like the questions that they're asking are a lot about like how to support open processes within a university yeah yeah um, yeah i think yeah well like, and i think they're trying to figure out there's like seven specific interests there are i i just haven't heard a lot of conversation yet about like looking at the health of communities like that doesn't seem to be where the conversation has landed too much so it's it's things like how do we support the research promotion and tenure process with respect to people producing open artifacts so yeah. like play a role in that, which is just really different than like, how do we monitor the health of the communities that we rely on here in the university or the health of the communities of things that go through the tech transfer process, you know, and, and live beyond the university. And they may be there, but I just haven't heard that yet. So that's what yeah. I think mean. they seem a little in, different. I think in, in some of those, some of those first meetings, we, we kind of had that conversation about the uh the kind of the distinction between community health and and the promotion of open source at the at kind of that organizational level mm -hmm. uh, so they i i think they really do see that as kind of two different things mm -hmm. uh, so yeah to, to, to that <laughs> point and to, yeah there are a lot of a lot of different threads i think in this group and um, it's, it's great. I mean, it's a great group of people. I just think we're going to think about it a little bit differently. Yeah. Well, and I think that the tenure promotion case is like one case. I've heard like five or six other things mentioned. Like I know Stevens Jacobs is pushing the tenure and promotion stuff, but 
I think there's commercialization that's on people's minds. It's how to manage the security of open source. So I, I do think yeah, there's like all these different interests, yes. which I see it's very, um, uh, there's not a shared view of what the most important thing is because it's very university specific, which is very different than the other working groups that we have, Let's not good or that. bad. Yeah, right. Not I, good. Yeah. I actually, I actually think it's good uh, because there, there's some overlap between the university and the scientific software uh, context groups, and the, uh, the, but the, the differences are, are where. Uh, is the is the interesting part right so the scientific software group these are mostly university people as well however they are interested in community the community portion of it so it's it's kind of more a matter of perspective right so the uh the university group is is coming from the perspective of the university organization and the uh the scientific software group is coming from the perspective of the the community so i think it it, it fits well uh and prevents prevents too much overlap in those two groups. So yeah, I think they will partner well as well, the two groups. We are um we are now on Malta time. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know I mean, what that means. Is this like Don's last moment, last meeting before she gets my to go last to Malta? meeting and then I'm on vacation. Is it, I won't uh, be in Malta until tomorrow though. But, but, this is packing time is what this is gonna be. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh well this is a really good conversation. I think it was great to kind of help sort some of these things out. And um for a lot of you we'll see you in a couple weeks or around and others of you we'll see you in a long time from now. Yeah. So, um, all right. Take care. I'm, uh, uh, Enjoy your vacations. If, yeah. If, if it's okay with everyone, I'm going to propose a new meeting time in Slack. That's fine. I too. just, I am okay. not going to be able to get here on time on Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and start that conversation, Kevin. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you Bye. later.